So what clinical effectiveness research means to me um, really has to do with that shared decision making. It's very difficult for people in any situation where um, you have um, very intense emotions about something um, inherent to your survival to have shared decision making when you don't understand what those decision making uh, possibilities are. And so the comparative effectiveness research to be able to put down in front of people the different um, risks put forth between different types of treatments um, or the different routes in which things might take depending on what you choose. So I think of the CER uh, work as being just vital to keeping um, the best communication between patients and their clinicians moving forward. So listening to voices, which is I think at the um, heart of this, is actually building relationships with people because it's through the relationships that are trusting that people feel more open to discuss um, and sort of bring to the table really important information that could help us solve problems. And so actually um, the skills that we talk about in patient engagement um, and helping have patient-centered outcomes research come to fruition are actually the exact communication skills that are needed to uh, work collaboratively with our colleagues from other professions. In the Vanderbilt program in interprofessional learning, we talk a lot about using these skills not just to engage with patients, but actually to engage with our larger team that we work with. The aspect of using um, the voices from a lot of other professionals is oftentimes forgotten um, because uh, we're all really sort of busy doing our own job in our own track. And yet the, um, the vital need to hear the perspective of the social worker, the pharmacist, of the nurse, of the occupational therapist, of the physical therapist, because they're viewing the values that this person has in terms of their care um, in different lights. They can help in different ways. I think one specific story actually I can have about this, well, we all know that a huge um, proportion of errors happen within medication. And so uh, we teach all of our students how to do medication reconciliations, how to interview around medications um, and sort of be detectives in making sure that what people are prescribed are really, that they're really taking it, are they taking it appropriately. And every year um, I ask the students after they're done learning how to work with these skills, I ask the students, how many of you think you'll use this on a day-to-day -day basis? And usually the medical students, nursing and pharmacy students all raise their hands and the social workers don't. And I ask why? And they said, well, I mean, we're not gonna be working with medication at all. And the challenge that I put forth to the students is you never know which one of you is going to build the best relationship with someone. And that through that relationship, they're going to be open enough to confide in you that perhaps they don't know how to take their meds right, or perhaps they don't have refrigeration and this medicine that they were just prescribed needs refrigeration, or that, uh, that they're not taking it as prescribed but they're sort of embarrassed to tell their practitioner. If they know just a little bit about medication reconciliation and just a little bit about the questions that other clinicians need to know, that they might be able to be that bridge between what the patient needs and what they might be doing in real life with actually what the practitioners need to know. Um, so that's just a small example of how important it is for us to keep being open and sort of being curious to how other people might see something.